They're already colouring up right now as we speak, look. They're colouring up as we speak. What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now very recently I did this black waterscape that you can see behind me. I really really like it but I feel like I want to do a different one that's planted as well because this is obviously it's just hardscape only. Some wood coming in, loads of leaves and tannins. I want to do it with plants. And here is the tank I'm going to be scaping this one all the way over on the right. So we've done this one so far which is the sort of naturalistic ember tetra tank that I was doing. Kind of like a South American Brazilian sort of style biotope. Biotope means like you try to simulate what nature's done anyway. And again that's what I want to do with this one. Now I'm not even sure what fish I want yet. You'll know by the title but at this stage I know that I want something black water lots and lots of the big bits of driftwood we could see at the back they leach tons of tannins we've got loads of different bits of wood to choose from we've got loads of rocks loads of gravel I quite often I've been going for quite a lot of the lighter gravel that you can see here so in this one I'm going to go for a darker gravel so I've got two choices I've got this style stuff here and then also these larger sort of river pieces as well and I think the two will actually go really well together because it's good to have a grading so you go from like fine to coarse um, when, when you see it in the tank and that always looks quite good. So the first thing I want to do is get in a layer of crushed lava rock in there and that will create a really good area for beneficial bacteria to colonise and stop any nasties developing in compacted sand. base layer and nutrition sorted. Next I'm just going to pile it up with a load of like sort of spare sand I've got just to build some height and depth of sand so we've got something nice to plant into before putting our final sort of decorative layer over the top. Yeah so this is the next layer that I'm talking about so it's sand, gravel and aqua soil all mixed into one. Now it's pretty ugly and we're going to be able to see that from the side here if we don't you know build it up steadily with the decorative sand as well. So what I'll do is I'll put that that new layer into that middle section but then the decorative layer around the edges so that you can't see it. Right, there we go, a great little base layer to start and from the side on look, just looks nice and tidy, you can't see all that you know, ugly gravel that's underneath this deck which is stuff on top. But to be honest, it's probably all going to mix about as it goes, it won't stay perfect like that. Plus we've got the coarser ones going on top as well, we've got rocks to put in, we've got wood to put in, in fact that's what we need to do next now. I'm going to choose my wood pieces and locations first, basically I want big chunky bits at the sides and a nice sort of gap in the middle. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the original idea was to have two sort of builded areas to decide, build it, you know what I mean? Like higher areas to decide with like a gap in the middle. But I put that together and it looks kind of like a tree stump, doesn't it? And I really like that. I think that really works well with this size of aquarium. 
Uh, it's not very big at the end of the day, is it? It's, well, it's not small, but it's still, I consider this the largest sort of nano, if you like. This, the two foot by one foot, you know, 100 litres. It's, it's not huge, is my point. So this lends itself well to having lots of open foreground because I want to absolutely cover the thing in leaf litter. I just think that will look really good with shoots of sort of greenery poking through that have, that have grown out of the darkness. So I'm very pleased with how that's turning out, but to be honest, I could have done with the wood leaning the other side, but it doesn't really matter. That's how the wood is, and that's how you've got to scape it. The reason being is that from this angle over here, it's kind of leaning, the, ah, it doesn't matter, because most of the time you view, a, you view a tank from straight on, don't you? So we're all good. Yeah, you can see what I mean more like this, because obviously when we're viewing the whole tank, we're viewing it from here, now it'd be better if that stuff was in that corner, but that's just, you know, like I say, that's not the way the wood was structured. But if straight on, look, it looks really, really good. Now, so I've kept it nice and simple in the foreground, just these three little rocks, just to add a little bit more detail to the wood. Wood on its own sometimes looks a bit funny you don't tend to get that in nature do you where there's wood there's rocks nature always fills a void doesn't it um so that's all glued down now to give a sort of root system coming out of the log if you like or the tree trunk imitating it anyway but that's it i want to keep it just like that the background is going to be full of stems looping over nice simple big textures on this one and then foreground loads of leaf litter and loads of botanicals and, and just like a really cool sort of detailed look So I've just realized I've made a massive error and I forgot to put the foam pad underneath this tank. It's probably not essential, but I don't want to take any risks. So I've just got to take it off now. It should all stay in place. I've got some suckers to pull it off and then I'll lay the foam down and then cut, put the tank back on and then cut neatly around it. Click subscribe. Okay, crisis averted. <laughs> a pretty simple fix, really. And now it means we can go on to add more details and start planting. Now, with the planting for this tank, I want to do it a little bit differently because let me just show you the rest of this fish room. I've got two fish rooms, as many of you will know. Well, I quite often use plants that I know grow really well, and there's nothing wrong with that. Many of you have got multiple tanks would probably do the same, but everything can start to look a bit samey. Now, plants are green, so green is green. <laughs> But in this aquarium, obviously, there's going to be the tint going on from the black water, especially when we add the botan botanicals and sort of leaves, leaf litter, that sort of thing in the bottom. It's going to tint, tint the water. So I want to go for a bit more sort of larger leaves, if you like, on the plants. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be putting giant plants in there, don't get me wrong, like Amazon swords, although actually that would look pretty cool. No, I'm talking about like Hygrophila cymensis 53B and Hygrophila polysperma as well. They've got bigger leaves and I 
I think they'll suit the look a little bit more that I'm going for. And then in the foreground, just a couple of little bits of detailed plants, maybe the Blixer Japonica. I've got that in a few tanks and I absolutely love it. It's just it's just amazing looking plant and it goes so, so green. And I've got quite a lot of spare of it at the moment because I pulled a load out of another tank. Now let me show you the tank I got it from. Okay, so this is the other studio room and you can see this is the this is the main plant tank that I'm using at the moment to just basically I just hack off sections of it, loop a little bit of a plant weight in it and put it in the other studio. You know, for the shrimp racks and things like that. But if you see here, we've got some, oh, apart from the coolie loach, just chilling in that leaf there. Uh, we've got the Pogostaman Stella, la, 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 erect, I'm not even sure, I'll put it up on screen what that is. But the other side, look, computer down. Here we go, look, that is the Hygrophila Siamensis 53B and the Polysperma is the little one that you can see just in that gap there. So I'm gonna trim those right back, take them from this planted tank, which is doing really, really well. Um, there's no sort of algae or anything and transfer them over into the new setup. So it's actually quite good that I've trimmed these out because they require a half decent amount of light. They're not like stem plants like these that just tend to, for me to anyway to grow in any sort of light. But look, I'll show you what I mean. If you look at this polysperma here, from that angle it looks quite good, didn't it? It looks, you know, like healthy. Well, the top part does. But if you look at the underside, a lot of the leaves look, are sort of de deteriorating because they are struggling to get the required light that they need. So now that we're gonna hack it back, and actually I'm gonna continue with the process and take off a lot of this as well. From the trim section where I took these, even more shoots will grow, and then we'll have even more plants for other setups. Right, I'm really, really pleased with that so far. Just a few little bits of detail in the foreground. The background's got all the tall stem plants, the hygrophila, as I've already said. They'll all grow really tall, especially these ones peeking over the back here. That's the, the 53B. Those get absolutely huge, and they'll cover that whole area. That's why you can see, look, I've planted them quite sparsely, because they grow big and wide, and they'll cover a lot of light. If you put them too close together, you'll just get big die-off. So that's why I've done that. And the same for the Hygrophila polysperma. Again, look, there's good gaps in between everything there to allow light to come through as they all grow. Now this is the side where the filter's gonna be, so I haven't gone too heavy in that corner. But yeah, love that. I mean, I'm gonna fill it up now, see how it looks. Also, whilst we're setting up, fast growing stem plants will really help to keep algae down. Okay, so I know many of you are gonna ask two questions. One, how do I keep the water so clear? And number two, what is that? So the two things are actually combined. If you look, when this water comes out, look, it sprays left and right, rather than just spraying directly down. Now this is key because it means that it just sprays across and not disturbs all of this gravel or sand or aquasaur, whatever it's gonna be in the bottom. And look, it works really, really well. There's barely any mist at all in that. So what this actually is, is the inlet for an old filter I had. I just connected this bottom bit with the top bit because it's different pipe diameters, just with a little bit of tubing. Bit of tubing to a ball valve so I can turn it on and off or reduce the flow. And then it goes, Whoo! oh, that's just a connector, by the way. Like an adapter in the middle so that the two uh, females can just join into the male counterpart in the middle. You know, and it goes, Whoo! all the way over to this tap here where I've just got a little notch on this uh, hot and cold tap that tells me the right temperature. So that's it, nice and easy. And what this means is that I can do nice quick water changes in both studios whenever I want, really, really easy. And I've got another reel, this one here in fact, that I can just put into each tank and then goes underneath the sink and that can drain all the water out. Okay guys, and this is why you always pay attention when filling your tanks. I came 
tearing in here. Look at that. I mean, I'm proving that it's not quite level, obviously, but I think you can forgive me a few millimeters. But look at that. <laughs> it's starting to drip down as well, only just. But my God, I need to get this out quick. Okay, so it turns out we had an invasion of uh, woodlouse, or my kids call them cheesy bugs, in all that wood. Don't worry, I've scooped them all out and saved them. So I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Love it. I'd like to see some more green at the back, to be fair, but I've got to be patient. That'll grow in. I might just go out and buy some more just to fill in that back area and, you know, just to bring it up some height. But I really like this Pagostamon stellatus we've got there. I've actually got a lot more of it as well that I found in the tank as I was trimming. Now, these stems of it are, are a lot more green in comparison, and that's just literally because they've been down the bottom, not close to the light, whereas this one stem here grew right to the top of the tank and actually has got that sort of reddy pink hue to the ends. These will do the same, and then that'll look really, really nice for a bit of color other than green in the tank. Although that looks fantastic, me being me, I wasn't happy with just leaving that amount of the back, so I went and bought more. So this is the 53B, so I meant to 53B, and this is the Polysperma. Now, they do look different, like, at the moment compared to in the aquarium, but it'll only take a few weeks, oh, sorry. But it'll only take a few weeks before they all look just as good and as vibrant as those ones at the back. They'll be a bit darker green, you see. That's just how it is when they're grown immersed. They're grown out of water with the roots in the water. And then when you put them into your aquarium, they convert into their underwater state. So sometimes you'll get some die off, you'll get some of the leaves coming off, and then the new growth sort of comes through and looks fantastic. So, but for now, I just want to get these all in that back section because they're going to be the tall background plant. Woohoo, now that is looking good. So you've filled out that back area more. Not too much, because I'm aware of how much these, these plants grow and they get quite big. They will take over that whole back area. The polysperma that's down in this corner here, this will also, also take over that area, but they're not quite as big leaves and they're, you know, easily manageable trimming them. They're all easily manageable, it's just, you know, some grow bigger and faster than others. But this is gonna be a black water tank and we want lots of leaf litter on this front corner. It's not a corner, <laughs> on the foreground here. So we're gonna add that in now. I collected a load of sort of dead leaves and sticks from the river. Now you can put them in a sort of hydrogen peroxide solution if you want to kill anything off. I mean, I live in the middle of the countryside. I'm pretty happy with the condition of them. So I'm gonna put those in the foreground now. Oh my goodness, they look so cool, don't they? Really ultra realistic in my opinion. But heading over back to the sink area, I also found these elder cones. Now I just left them in this water just to make sure there wasn't any sort of like fungus growing on them and that they sank and they do and they look great. So they're going in as well. They look awesome, don't they? Oh, fantastic, yeah? So it's all those little details like that in the foreground that really do bring out the realness, if you like, of, I mean, as re like I say, as real as a glass box can be, but it just gives it extra little details. And there's not a lot of effort with that, really. I collected it from nature and I put it in. So, like I say, if you're worried about doing that in your tanks, you can put them in a hydrogen peroxide dip, but I'm happy, I'm happy with it all. Now the bogwood and the leaf litter and the uh, elder cones will all release tannings into the water, so it will give it that black water effect. I don't want this fully black water like my Neon Tetra tank. Have I shown you that? Hang on. This right here is the Neon Tetra tank and it's, you know, full of tannings and looks really, really dark. So this isn't quite what I want to go for because this is just doing something really cool. This is simulating like the Amazon rainforest when the floods come and all the leaf litter just completely stains the flooded area. The fish go into a like a, a breeding frenzy. These are Neon Tetras, by the way. So this is like trying to sort of simulate their natural environment. 
but we don't want it this dark in the new aquarium. And the way to stop it going as dark as that is to do two things. One, more water changes, and two, we can add something called Purigen to the, to the filter system, which we'll be setting up in a moment. I'll show you that, but it's, it's basically just these little beads that capture any of the stained water and lock it in, and then you clean them later on. <laughs> I think that's how it works anyway. Oh yes, how smart does that look? So you guys know, I love my stainless steel pipes. Look, I've got them over in the Brazilian style Ember Tetra Aquarium. They just look so neat if you ask me. They don't like get dirty. So you can get glass versions of these, but they just get dirt inside. It's more maintenance, more cleaning. And when you've got as many tanks as me, you don't want that sort of hassle. So yeah, look, look how good they look. Really nice. I might need to move, move? <laughs> I might need to move that plant just there because that, that polysperma is just right in just where it's sat. So if I just shift that along a bit and just leave that area clear, everything will sort of grow into that area anyway, but so far guys, so good. Now we need to collect, connect the plumbing, the pipe work to the back there. You see, look, there you go, look. They come right down to the bottom there. So I'll, I'll raise them slightly up so that they've got a little bit of a gap to be able to get my plastic uh, tubing on. Or I could actually just move the whole thing right across, couldn't I? Yeah, one or the other anyway, and then we can attach it to our filter. So before we switch the filter on, I just want to explain to you guys what's so good about the Waze line, really, the, the Fermo. This is the 250. It's the Fermo, which means it's got a built-in heater here, which is just great. It means that you don't have to have anything ugly in the tank, and you can, well, apart from those, but <laughs> I think they're pretty cool, to be fair. And then you've got a pre-filter section here. Now this all comes out. Hang on, let me show you. Okay, so inside here, look, you can see back end. Oh, I've just poured water everywhere. That was stupid of me. But yeah, look, back end, we've got, that's the heater, media trays all the way going down. And then on the top here, this actually slides out this piece like that. And then when you open it up, inside you've got all of these sponges. Mine have been in a setup already, so they've already got some, you know, bacteria and that, everything all over them, and they're all good, good to go, ready in the tank. But yeah, this is the thing for me that actually sets it apart from any, anything else, because I can just pull this out whenever I want and just clean these, like, foam bits here really quickly, and the rest of it just stays pretty much perfectly clean. And it's just a way of keeping nitrates really low all the time. Okay, we're very, very bubbly, but that is looking fire. Now for the, for the fish that I've got planned in this scape, I'm gonna need to turn the flow down a bit, which I can just adjust on one of the taps down the bottom on the actual filter itself, because our botanicals are getting blown everywhere as well. It's okay though. They'll actually sort of settle where they naturally would do in, you know, in, in an actual stream. They'd find a little crevice and stay there, wouldn't they? So, but I do want some more in the front here, so I'm gonna have to turn it down. Right, flow adjusted, bubbles clearing, and we are ready to put in some fish. So we've added six awesome sparkling gouramis there. They're gonna take a little bit of like time just to chill out and get used to it. They'll color up amazingly well. I've got a good feeling about this uh, Fluval light because it's actually got like all the different spectrum of LEDs in it. Um, and I think it's gonna really make the colors. Look, they're already coloring up right now as we speak, look. They're coloring up as we speak. They look so good. I say we, it's just me speaking. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> oh, they look great, didn't they? Sparkling Grammys are a really, really cool fish. They're so small and full of personality. I've kept them before. They create little territories and it'll be really, really interesting to watch them in this scape. The good thing about them is they're relatively peaceful in a big size aquarium like this. Well, it's big for the size of the fish anyway. And it means we can actually stock with other sort of fish as well, species, like a schooling fish of some kind. And it, you know, they're really good for that. They're, they allow you to, to have a good variety in the tank with them.
Now the sparkling grimy guys can be a little bit shy and timid, but I've found in the past the best way to bring them out and you know, so they're on show quite a lot of the time is to provide extra cover for them. So we're doing really well in this tank because there's so much cover already for them to go in and out of really quickly. But another thing they do like is some floating plants. So, you know, you don't have to cover the whole surface, but just a few, and we've got quite a lot of nice ones we can choose from. So over in this tank here, I've got some really nice red fruit, red root float, as you can see there. And then over on the racking system as well, more red root float. Oh, let's see secret fish there i can't tell you what that is until another vlog update so make sure you subscribe and see future videos uh, yeah i've got more red fruit floaters in all of these and then the neon tetra tank of course i've got more of the amazon frog bit i've got some salvinia there as well which is good and i've got even more red root floaters so i'm going to take a few of all of those and put them in that new tank Okay, so there's just a few there, but you know, that'll all spread and grow out really more in time. It's not like they haven't got loads of cover already. And remember those background plants within two weeks to a week are gonna be all the way at the surface already. They're gonna have so much cover in this. Those grammys are gonna love this little palace I've made for them. <laughs> I mean, I love it as well. Look at that. It's, it's got such a natural look to it, isn't it? Definitely sort of thing that you could see in nature, I think. I think I'm really happy with how this one's turned out. And it's the sort of thing I wanna do a lot more of. And I think on a bigger scale as well.